A long, long time ago, a huge meteorite smashed into the Earth with a horrible destructive power. It was several times bigger than the one that wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Luckily, there were no lives it could have taken, or else it would have been a real catastrophe. Now, scientists think it did leave behind a huge footprint, the massive Antarctica impact crater that is bigger than the entire state of New York. The location also has a gravitational Wilkesland anomaly going on. At first, scientists noticed something weird here when they measured Earth's gravity in that region. A strange gravity hole, or a negative gravity anomaly. Later, with better technology, they found something even weirder. There was a positive gravity anomaly inside that gravity hole, a spot with stronger gravity. This kind of structure, called a mascon, short for mass concentration, often shows up in places where giant space rocks or meteorites have slammed into the planet. When a meteor hits hard enough, it punches through the Earth's crust and shakes the mantle below. It can spring back up and leave behind a super dense plug of material, which causes stronger gravity right in the center of the crater. It's something like a frosty donut, with ice filling the gap and a dense center rising up from underneath. In 2018, Scientists used advanced scanning techniques to study and map the Wilkesland meteorite impact in more detail than ever before. They saw that it wasn't a perfect circle, but more of a U-shape, and the northern part looked like something had broken it apart. It possibly happened when Australia split away from Antarctica about 35 million years ago. Some scientists even think you can still see parts of the crater in southern Australia today. This clue also supports the idea that the giant crater under Antarctica formed before the continents broke apart. There have been different ideas about what created this strange formation. Some said it might be a volcano, or an eroded valley, or even a sedimentary basin. That is a place where sediments build up over millions of years. But many scientists now believe the most likely explanation is a massive meteor impact. It was possibly one of the biggest to ever hit Earth. A 2015 study even estimated the age of the crater as its size matches the kind of space rocks that smashed into Earth between 4.1 and 3.8 billion years ago. The Wilkesland meteorite impact was so powerful because the meteor that caused it could have been up to 30 miles wide. That's four to five times wider than the Chicxulub meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Even that meteor was enough to cause massive destruction with wildfires, acid rain, tsunamis, and a climate crash that wiped out about 75% of all existing life. So it was lucky in a way that the meteorite that gave us the giant crater under Antarctica visited at a time when there were only microbes and no plants or animals on Earth. It didn't cause mass extinction or leave behind charcoal from ancient fires, but it may have changed the entire planet. Still, scientists haven't put the Wilkes Land Anomaly mystery in the solved files, because the crater is buried deep under Antarctica's thick ice sheet. It's hard to study up close. Scientists say we can't rule out the other ideas just yet, but if the meteor theory is right, then the Wilkes Land crater could be the largest known impact crater on Earth. So far, this title belongs to another contestant, the Vredefort Crater in South Africa. Right now, the crater is around 99 miles wide, which is huge. But it's not as wide as the Chicxulub Crater in Mexico, which is about 112 miles wide. But the Vredefort Crater used to be way bigger, around 155 to 174 miles wide, before time and erosion wore it down. That means even though the Chicxulub impact was striking, the Vredefort impact was likely even more powerful, the biggest one we know of that hit Earth. According to the latest study, that asteroid was 12.4 to 15.5 miles wide and might have hit Earth at a speed of 45,000 to 56,000 miles per hour. It's important for science because knowing the real size of this impact helps us build better models to understand Earth's geology, 
and how giant impacts shape planets even beyond Earth. Measuring ancient craters is really tricky. Over 2 billion years, erosion wears away the edges and newer rocks form over the crater. That's what happened to Vredefort. Now, only small bits of the original crater rim are visible, and the rest is hidden under newer rock. To figure out its true size, scientists studied minerals like quartz and zircon found around the crater. These minerals still have fractures and shock patterns that show us how powerful the blast was. Wilkes Land Anomaly isn't the only case on our planet where gravity is acting weirdly. For over 40 years, scientists were trying to solve a strange mystery in Canada. Parts of the country, especially around Hudson Bay, seem to have less gravity than the rest of the world. That means if you stepped on a scale there, you'd weigh just a tiny bit less than usual. Researchers first discovered this weird difference in the 1960s when they were mapping Earth's gravity. Gravity is linked to mass. The more mass there is, the stronger the gravity. And since Earth isn't shaped perfectly like a ball, but is slightly squashed at the poles and bulges at the equator, it makes sense that its mass isn't spread out evenly. So, the first out of the two main theories to explain the Hudson Bay mystery has to do with magma. Yes, that super hot, gooey rock deep under our planet's surface. Magma constantly churns like boiling soup in a process called convection. As this magma moves, it can drag parts of Earth's crust down with it. That makes the area lighter, which lowers the gravity. The second area has to do with the Laurentide Ice Sheet, a massive glacier that covered much of Canada during the last ice age. This ice was up to 2.3 miles thick in some parts of Hudson's Bay. That's like stacking 10 Empire State Buildings on top of each other. Because it was so heavy, the ice pressed the land down like a thumb on a sponge. Even though the ice melted away about 10,000 years ago, the land underneath is still slowly bouncing back, kind of like a memory foam mattress after you get up. This slow rise is called glacial rebound, and it's happening at less than half an inch per year. Until the land fully bounces back, which could take 5,000 more years, it will continue to have less mass, and that means less gravity. Both of these theories are right. To figure this out, scientists used super advanced satellites, which floated around 300 miles above Earth for several years. These satellites flew in pairs and detected how far apart they were pulled as they passed over areas like Hudson Bay to measure tiny changes in gravity. When the front satellite passed over a low gravity area, it drifted just slightly, and that change was recorded. Thanks to this research, scientists created detailed maps showing what Hudson Bay looked like during the last ice age. They discovered two huge bulges on the west and east sides, where the ice was thickest. And those spots have the weakest gravity today. The effects of this are still visible, and while sea levels are rising in most parts of the world, the land around Hudson Bay is rising so fast that sea levels there are actually dropping. Solving mysteries like this or the Antarctica Impact Crater Anomaly gives scientists amazing insights into the past of our planet. And by understanding how past changes in temperature and geology affected Earth, scientists can predict how today's human activity can impact our future. It was the summer of 1949. Young geologist Vadim Kolpakov was on a mission to northern Russia in the Irkutsk region. His job was to draw a geological map of the area. While on duty, he came across something so mysterious and remarkable, it continued to puzzle experts decades later. Ooh, what could it be? It was the middle of August. Kolpakov, though tired from all the walking, reached the area he needed to map. There, he met the local Yakut people, who warned him about a bad place hidden in the woods. Though now it's more famous as the Potomsky Crater, locals had dubbed it Fire Eagle Nest, probably because it looks like a giant bird nest sitting on a hill. And I mean giant. It rises 130 feet in the air, half as tall as a giant sequoia. 
The cone-like structure's base has a diameter of 320 feet, almost as wide as the Seattle Space Needle is tall. But what was hiding inside would be the most surprising and baffling discovery. Well, if you could get close enough to uncover its secrets. According to the Yakut people, even wild animals are scared to go near it. Locals had all sorts of theories about this earthly mystery. They said that people fell ill around it, and some of them even went missing, never to be found. When the young geologist heard about the possible dangers, he wasn't scared at all. He became even more curious about what's going on in that crater. So he decided to approach it, get a closer look and find out. He thought that, as an expert, he might be able to give a simple explanation. If only it were that easy. He began walking towards it slowly, while also observing the nature around it. He looked at some of the half-broken trees, the soil, and the plants. At first, he thought it might be an archaeological artifact. But the ancient locals didn't have the engineering technology the Egyptians or Romans had back then to build something so big. Could it be the work of another ancient civilization, though? From far away, it looked like a giant bird nest indeed. The closer he got, the bigger it became. That was when he realized it couldn't have been built by humans. There was nothing that resembled any ancient architecture he could connect it to. Maybe it was a volcano. A plausible theory, but there haven't been any around that location for millions of years. Plus, the crater appeared to be fresh. It was also deserted. Trees didn't grow on the slopes of this natural structure, and the winds didn't carry enough soil to make plant growth possible. Are the Yakut people correct? Do animals avoid it too? He climbed all the way to the top and discovered something unbelievable. It was so hot that he felt the sweat running down his forehead. It was as if he was close to a fire source. When he looked down, he was met with a perfectly circular mound in the middle. Another mystery, he thought to himself. The round hump in the center of the crater was around 40 feet tall, the height of your standard telephone pole. Such things don't appear in volcanoes, even in extinct ones, and there aren't any around here that link to this particular mound. Without being able to solve the strange appearance of the bad place, Kolpakov went back home and told everyone about his discovery. What was once a local anomaly would soon become a worldwide mystery. After a while, the crater was named the most mysterious place in Russia for many reasons. Trees didn't grow on or around the structure, and they also found that radiation levels were very high. But I'm getting ahead of myself, and I sure don't want to do that. His discovery sparked an interest in the scientific community, and people started digging and coming up with theories. A lot of experts agreed that this must have been the work of a meteorite. They believed that the space rock entered the Earth's atmosphere at incredible speeds, but had been slowed down quite a bit by the time it struck the surface. But it still hit hard enough to form the infamous crater. As the years went on, Without a definite answer to what happened, almost everyone agreed that this must be the case. But later, other scientists came to add their own alternate theories. One of them was geologist Alexander Portnoff. He believed that the crater was the result of a space rock slicing off the famous Tunguska meteoroid, which exploded over Krasnoyarsk, the third largest city in Siberia, in the summer of 1908. But get this! the meteorite that should have struck the Earth was never found. The accepted theory is that it disintegrated a few miles in the air before it made contact. Those two theories inspired many expeditions to the mysterious site. Visiting scientists took samples of the soil and surrounding plants. Would lab tests prove that this thing had cosmic origins? Hard to say, because their efforts ended up being fruitless. So, the research continued and only grew as the story began making headlines. In 2006, Dr. Alexander Dmitriev from the Irkutsk State Technical University found a puzzling magnetic anomaly in the area. He thought that there could be iron or some other metal a few hundred feet below the surface. So, another expert joined the project. It was Dr. Igor Simonov from the Moscow Institute for Problems in Mechanics. 
He ran some tests to see if a meteorite impact could create this double mound structure. Sometime later, he came out with his findings. The crater was likely formed by a falling, somewhat spherical object made from a dense material that could only exist in space. When the paper covering this theory came out, some experts did more experiments to see if it was possible. They found that it wasn't just one object falling from space, but two, traveling over 14,000 miles per hour. When the first meteorite hit the Earth, it exploded and formed the crater. Then the second object followed, but it was slowed down by the first impact and sunk deep into the ground. Yet again, there were problems with that theory too. Many astrophysicists objected, claiming that meteorites can't fly one after the other and hit the planet in the exact same spot. With so many questions still unanswered, more and more experts came to the Siberian location to take a shot at solving the mystery. One of them started collecting wood samples to determine the age of the trees in the area and compared them to small samples taken on the slope itself. In the end, they finally had a breakthrough. They found that the crater likely appeared about 300 years ago. When? Check. How? Still a mystery. They came across another secret while studying the trees. By counting the rings in a tree's trunk, scientists can find not only how old they are, but also any abnormalities in that time. With this experiment, they noticed that the vegetation grew way faster than usual in this spot. After ruling out other growth-boosting factors like better soil content and more sunshine for some period of time, the only guess they were left with was… radiation. Yes, the experts knew that when exposed to high doses of radiation, trees and plants grow faster. But the radiation levels on and around the crater were low. At some point in the last 300 years or so, there must have been radioactive material in the area. Their way to check was to examine the trees even further for elements that show that. And bingo! They found high levels of uranium and strontium in the trunks. But those elements had decayed in the last 20 years, hence why initial readings on the crater itself weren't too high. The next step was to finally unveil the mystery of what this thing is. They turned their attention to the assumption Kolpakov had made when he first explored the Fire Eagle Nest. What if this thing is a volcano that, instead of lava, spews out gas? And do you think that was the answer they had been looking for? You should know by now that there was a problem with this theory too. The gases most volcanoes put out aren't dangerously radioactive. So that couldn't explain the radiation in the trees. That, and it hadn't erupted in recent years to analyze its gas. Though a gas eruption could explain how the thing rose from the underground. And a second eruption could be what caused that mound to spring up in the center. Yet the mystery remains to this day. Why were the trees radioactive at some point? Why is there high magnetism in the area? If a space rock hit the Earth, where did it go? And if it wasn't a meteorite, then what gave birth to this enigmatic mound jutting out of the isolated Siberian forest? Expeditions continue to this day in search of answers. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.